And what's more important, purpose or process? Purpose every day of the week. So it's a fundamental thing I've, I've lived my career by is understanding why you're doing something, understanding the purpose of what you're looking to achieve and not the process. And so if the process doesn't support the purpose, it's the process that's wrong. So it's a really good check, anything you're doing. Do I want to move jobs? Why? What's the purpose? What am I trying to achieve? Um, do I want a promotion? Um, I've come up with a new initiative. What's the purpose? Um, people aren't gauging with what they're doing. Do they know their own purpose? It's 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 a it's a really good way of sort of establishing the effectiveness or the success of, of something happening. So I think that there's probably some examples I need to, to talk about where the process can be achieved at the expense of the purpose. Um, I've, ju I've just thought of an example, actually, now you've explained it. Um, and I'll, I'll share what you think of one. I'm, I'm sure, sure, I'm sure you've got, got plenty. Yeah. So I was, I, th I think this is what you mean by that, that term. So I was leading a team of personal trainers and I was a bit of a stickler for detail. So name badges, what are your name badge? <laughs> Fucking hell, do my nuts and <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me too. Cause I'm like, if I want you to know my name, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I was a stickler for it. Cause I just thought little details were important. Um, <laughs> and I came in one day and one of the PTs didn't have a name badge on and they had a fleece on they were wearing the sort of fitness top and yeah. fleece over the top I said what's your name badge and they went oh I'm wearing it and I was like no you're not and they went look I'm wearing it and got a bit <laughs> shitty about it I was like yeah but I can't see it and they were like I was like it's on I was about to say put it in your pocket yeah I was like you might as well wear it in your pocket and, then, and I think the point was and I think this is, this That's is exactly what saying, yeah. is is that obviously the process she was wearing the name badge but the purpose of wearing the name badge is that someone could see it and read your name and <laughs> and for me that was yeah. just yeah it was a, a prime example of someone putting just a process over the purpose <laughs> going yeah right name badge it's on don't, don't know why or, or why exactly uh, exactly that so the I think when I was I was managing um, a sales team and um, I think you've experienced this too is I've done 50 calls this week great okay good and what what have you got with them Nothing. So, right. But I've done 50 calls. Okay. But you've, you've got nothing out of them. Yes, but I've, I've got, and it was like this obsession with the number of calls because yeah. as an organization, what was what was being driven was you need to make 50 calls a week. Well, the purpose behind this 50 calls was to get a visit or a client appointment or whatever it might have been. So if he'd said, I've made five calls this week, great, and I've got five visits, brilliant. I don't want to know if you made 50 calls, you've got nothing out. There's no point. So it goes back to what's the purpose of making that call in the first place? Because I'm going to say, hi, yeah, I made a call, bye, every time. And I've achieved the process perfectly. I can make 100 calls like that. But if I haven't really made one client appointment or, or, or whatever the purpose of that call is, I've, I've achieved the process at the expense of the purpose. Yeah, Yeah. no, I think it's 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 really important. And I, I know when I've been enrolled previously, when I've when I've, I've done better in roles, it's when the leader or my boss or whatever you want to call them, it, it's been more outcome focused. Yeah. Where they don't, they don't micromanage because I've done those roles as well. And I was never very good at them, funny enough. And people, people were like, this is the outcome. I don't care how you get it done. Just, get, just yeah. get it done. And, and for me, the, the, first of all, that just tells me that they, they have a level of trust in me and I want to I want to repay that level of trust by doing a good job and, and delivering the outcome yeah. and you're speaking to a couple of things that are, are really important when I talk about my own learning and development you know through throughout my career there's a, there's a couple of um, uh, people I talk about there that you've spoken about so trust trust is the big thing and you know that the trust advisor trust equation there's lots of research lots of other people who will talk about it is the foundation of every effective relationship um, so if somebody trusts you to do something, they give you the autonomy to do something. Um, there's a theory of motivation by Dan Pink, and he's, he speaks about um, once you take out the money side of things, people need to be paid enough to, to be recognised in, in a, an equitable, fair way. Mm -hmm. Take that out, three things essentially contribute to, to motivation. The first one is, is autonomy. So are you trusted to do what you, what you need to do in your way, in a way that makes sense to you? Um, and you have the freedom in which to operate. Um, do you have the opportunity to develop mastery? So can you improve what you do? Can you develop within what you do? Can you 
um, you know, essentially, yeah, improve. Can you get better at what it is you're doing? So if you can do that and you've got the autonomy, then then you're going to drive motivation. And then the the third one is purpose. So are you clear on your why? Why do you exist within the organisation? How does what you do today impact the success of the business or your team? You know, more broadly. So those those three things, and you just picked up on two of those straight away. So. Mm. Simon Sinek talked a lot about starting with a why. Start with a why. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's so important. And when I've worked in leadership roles previously, I've, I've always found that you get a far better response from people when you explain the why. It's, you know, I think he, yeah, I think he's he's obviously on to something there. No, he I absolutely is. And I used, um, um, I use, I use that, the, it talks about the golden circle, start with why. So it's the why, why you do it, the what you do and the how you do it. Um, and I use that to structure presentations, to talk about strategy, to talk about this big piece of work that I've done recently across across the, um, the division that I'm responsible for. So it's about 110 or so people. Um, is every role has a why, a what, and a how. Mm-hmm. So we can say at the most junior level, then understand their why and how their why supports the team why and how that team why supports the division why and how that why supports the organisation why. And if you give people the context and they understand that by doing this it supports and by doing that it doesn't, you then equip, you know, your managers to have the right conversations. And also it should be about transparency, right? So they can see, okay, well, well, I might like to do that job. Well, what does that job actually look like? What's their why? How can I then start to develop myself to aim for that? I I guess that goes back to some of the conversation we've had earlier around promotion or career development is is that gap analysis you know if i want to be in this role what does that mean what does that look like what do they need to have and where am i in relation to that and then do i need to fill that by a course by a mindset by whatever it might mm-hmm. be but you, you kind of need to have done that gap analysis first to understand mm-hmm. what it is you need to do differently to demonstrate that level of skill set or experience